Hello everyone, Jeff Brozovich here from LongRangeOnly.com and today we're doing another rifle review. This time this is a rifle from Bob Beck and the guys over at MOA Rifles. We've heard a lot about Bob's rifles. I've never had a chance to get with one and shoot it so we got one of these shipped in and uh, this one is their Extreme Sporter model chambered in 300 rum. That's a lot of rifle in a small package so Let's get on with the testing and see how she does. Diving into this review, uh, first things I want to talk about is fit, finish, and uh, function uh, on this rifle. Things that, the things it has to offer for us and uh, how the rifle was fitted together and things like that. So. Let's start at the front of the barrel here. It's a, it's a sporter contour, pretty small contour barrel that is fluted, Cerakoted, all the metal is Cerakoted in a silver gray Cerakote. Um, rifle comes with this radial ported brake. Um, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter if you like that version. However, I shoot a lot of prone, so I requested a uh, side discharge brake, as you'll see in the picture here, which I ran on the gun while I was shooting it. Uh, so as we come back, you'll notice that it has a short Picatinny rail mounted in the front. This rail is unique in the fact that it utilize, you can utilize the back sling swivel mount with it and even while the bipod is attached you can still run your, your sling. Coming on back, uh, let's talk about the scope and mounts. It came with a 20 minute split rail mount. Um, the 20 minute is extremely useful when you're running a big scope like this, um, this is a heavy ATAC R scope, but it's made for long range, right? So this is the ATAC R 5 to 25 with zero stop, very nice optic. And uh, with this rail and 20 MOA from my 100 yard zero, I can dial up 83 minutes. What does 83 minutes do for me? With this rifle and my load and a 230 grain burger, 83 minutes of elevation gets me to just a little over 2,300 yards for a center reticle hold. That's more than adequate for a what rifle of this weight and what we're going to do with it. But if a guy's out doing a little target practice and wants to see just what she'll do, you got the capability to hold center reticle to 2,300 yards. On the rear ring, we have the bubble level mounted on top of the ring cap. This is very nice, allows you to view your level, make sure you're leveled up before you lock your bipod when you're in shooting position behind the gun. As we move inside the rifle, and, and you know I had to tear it apart, so I took it all apart and uh, I'll show you some pictures here. The front lug area in the stock, and this is a McMillan, a McMillan stock, a real nice quality stock. The front lug area is bedded uh, really tight. It's, uh, they put some bedding compound in there, they tightened it up, they did a nice neat job. Um, it also has pillars in it, so it's a pillar bedded uh, into this stock. It is a nice fit. It's tight. It doesn't move anywhere. When you put it in and torque down your screws, it's going to go back to the same place every time. The other thing I want to talk about inside is the mag box length. Now this is very important, and you can tell when a rifle builder does his homework. How many times have you went and you bought a rifle, and you want to load a long, sleek burger bullet out to the lands and you can't get there because you run out of mag box space. I was able to load this 230 to the lands. My load ended up being 30,000 soft, but anyway, I could load it to the lands and still cycle these bullets through the, through the mag box without any problem. So what that means is they've done their homework on the amount of free bore in their reamer that they chambered it with and matched it to their mag box. Keeping the bullet out there far enough, you can utilize, utilize all the case capacity of the rum and still load to the lands and still function in the mag box. That, that's, that's really nice. I was impressed. MOA's custom action has all the features we'd expect. You got your side bolt release right here so you can pull your bolt out with ease. M16 extractor and they've skeletonized the bolt handle to reduce all the weight they could there. Now one other option is you can run these little inserts. I'll show you pictures here of either with or without. So if you want to drop even just a couple fractions of an ounce, you can take that, uh, those inserts out and run that bolt handle bare, or they offer these little inserts to give you a better grip. If you prefer a little bigger handle, have big hands like I do. 
Okay, the other things we find when we go inside the rifle, removing the bottom metal, I was impressed with these screws. Now we've all had the problem with action screws with the straight slotted screws stripping out and looking like crap and all that. And then so the step up from there was a Allen uh, type head screw. Bob's went ahead, he's come up with some really nice Torx drive screws here. Take a look at this picture. Um, these, once you fit a Torx in these things, you're not going to do any stripping or boogering up and they're going to continue to look nice. I, I really appreciate things like that so I can take my rifle apart and put it back together and not have worn out looking screws. The other thing is the fit and finish around the bottom metal to the stock is very nice. It's perfect. The bottom metal and everything fits right. The uh, trap door on the BDL plate works just that easy. It's a nice easy push. Latch is perfect. Some rifles don't have that because they don't fit their bottom metal right. This is all fitted. The fit and finish is nice here. Inside, we'll find a jewel trigger. We all know jewel trigger is a very high quality trigger. You can adjust it down as low as you dare and uh, it'll still function properly. So top quality there again with a jewel trigger. Okay, on uh, fit and finish and options, let's talk about uh, the weight of this rifle. I pulled the scope off, scope and rings off, put it on a scale. This is with the mounts on it and uh, we come in at 7 pounds, 15 and a half ounces. So the rifle alone is weighing in just under 8 pounds at 7 pounds, 15 and a half ounces. Put the scope back on, scope rings and rifle ready to go, complete rifle package. You're looking at uh, 10 pounds, 8 and a half ounces. So you're about 10 and a half pounds with this rifle scoped up, ready to go. Okay, let's talk about load work up a little bit. Uh, when I got this rifle, they had already fired it, test fired it, and done uh, the barrel break in, so I didn't have to mess with that. So I moved right into load development. I loaded up a load in some new um, ADG 300 rum brass. Um, I tried a couple different powders, uh, Reloader 33, H1000, and uh, I ended up trying uh, Vitavori N570. The rifle really liked N570. Now this is a 26 inch barreled rifle and it uh, it produced good velocities. My maximum load in this, and this is a full house load, um, and as always if you see load data in this video please work up slowly to these numbers. Your rifle may not like this load and it might be over pressure in your rifle. We talked about chamber specs earlier. You can't take somebody's load and just start out there. So anyway, with that said, uh, I worked up the load and I got up to a very consistent 3,080 feet per second pretty easily. The rifle shooting off a bipod in field position prone, I was shooting consistent half minute groups and a few were a little better. So that to me says uh, that thing's ready to go to the field. The ES on this load with N570 was uh, in a single digits. There was no reason not to pursue it. The seating depth it liked was about 30 thousandths off the lands. So low development was relatively easy. I zeroed the rifle and started taking it out for some longer shooting. So with the rifle zeroed, load workup done, all the velocities checked and into my uh, ballistic app, I, uh, I took the rifle right to uh, a thousand yards. and. Uh, Dial-ups were spot on and I shot, I held a half minute at a thousand yards with the rifle, which was pretty impressive. Again, this is a fairly light rifle with a small contour barrel for the amount of, uh, you know, pushing a, a 230 grain bullet to 3,080 feet per second. That's nothing to sneeze at. So, um, rifle handled it well, shot well there. I backed up and shot at some in the 500 yard range. Then I took the rifle out to 1,550 yards and was still able to maintain uh, inside one minute at elk vitals for sure at those distances with every shot. Well, you just can't bond with a rifle like that and shoot those kind of groups at those kind of distances and not want to hunt with it. So I, I hunted with this rifle this spring. This is my spring bear rifle. And uh, what I found out was the bears didn't cooperate. So I didn't get a bear with the rifle, but what I did do while I was out there, I'll, show, I'll drop in a little video here. I found a place to shoot. Um, and I had a rock out there at 1,339 yards shooting across a huge canyon. This rock was less than a half minute tall. So let's say it was about a four to six inch tall target, if that, and uh, just a little bit wider on the width 
going cold bore, here's what the two shots look like on that rifle. Okay. okay. All right, on it. Ooh, just above it. Right yep. there. Did you see it? Yeah. Yep. Impact. Hit. I narrowly missed the rock on the first shot by a couple inches. Like I said, inside one minute elk vitals for sure. Uh, but the important thing in that video shows you is I saw my impact. I seen I was off by a few inches. I put another round in the gun and I send the second one and connect with the rock. What does that say about the rifle? It's repeatable and consistent and accurate. It was you're able to make a correction and go back. So that says that the rifle is grouping well at those distances all the time. In conclusion, in summary, it's a fine rifle. It's not heavy, it shoots well. I definitely see where the guys at MOA put the time into the fit and finish and make the rifle a custom build. So when you buy one of these, you're getting what you pay for. And uh, I highly recommend them. With that, I thank you for watching. I hope this was a good review. I hope any of you considering buying one of these rifles got all the questions answered that you wanted out of this. So uh, at this point, I'll say goodbye. Jeff Brozovich from Long Range Only. Hey, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and uh, stop on over to our Long Range Only website. A lot of good stuff going on there, a lot of information. And uh, subscribe to us on YouTube so you make sure you catch all these videos. Thanks for watching.